Afternoon. I'm Neil Robert Turner and I've been doing some measurements. Um, don't know if you watched last time, but I charged uh, a pickup through, through two strong magnets by running it through. And uh, then we measured how strong they were. And first, they were measuring in at 20 Gauss. No, first they were, yeah, they were 20 Gauss. And then we charged them, we ran them through once, and they went up to uh, 160 Gauss. And then we ran them through again and they went up to about 350 gauss. But I couldn't hold the wand that you measure with uh, still enough. I was moving around. And if you do that in uh, a magnetic field, it's gonna, the me you're not going to get a very good measurement. And the other thing why I wanted to do these measurements is to show you that if you charge magnets through a vice in the way we've all seen people doing, the pole pieces are going to be really unevenly charged. Now the question is if you can hear it. I'm not sure if you can. And I think even Seymour Duncan makes calibrated um, pickups. I, th I, think, I think it was him. And the, all the pole pieces are actually charged differently. Or I might have dreamt that. I don't know. But anyway. And the reason is that it's not a good way to do, and if you've ever tried to charge a magnet by running it through the vise with two very strong neodymium magnets on each side, you'll know that you can't hold it straight. You just can't. It'll, you'll be moving it this way, I'll get something. You'll be moving it, you know, like that, or you'll, I'll get a pen. Right. Let's say these are the pole pieces, so we've got six pole pieces. So six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, on each side. On that one. So, and again, if you want this, all these tops to be south, and all them to be north, then you've got to have the magnet in with the north face here, because north attracts south. But, so, say you've got this like that, and on each side you've got... Um, the strong magnets and you try to run it through it's going to be really pulling on it or that way and that way and up and down and when you try to move it through there's no way you can move it through like that absolutely no way the because uh, uh, it's going to be going you're going to be like this and then you'll have it out watch the film that i did the other one and you'll see me doing that. I just can't do it properly. And I've made loads of them and I know if you do, you know, it's crap. But I, I always wondered how crap it was. And so we, now we can measure it. And what you really want is that all the pole pieces are the same, are charged the same. That's why when you see all these guitar techs, you know, moving your pickup 
and they're saying, oh, you've got to have the bass pole piece closer to the string and this one that way and all like that. Well, that would be right if all the pole pieces were charged the same and it was evenly strong, your pickup. But if you've been charging it like that, and sometimes the magnet, it even, it'll grab it and it'll go BOOM! And you'll be stuck to it and you have to pull it off and then you... That can't be good, can it? So now we're going to measure it and see what the difference is between all the pole pieces. And, and the other thing is, in a fender, guitar, you'll often see that they've got staggered pole pieces and it'll be the middle two, the D and the G string, they'll be a bit higher. And they did that because you, you want them to be a bit higher and it's to compensate for the radius because your strings will be a bit higher here, especially if you had the old fenders with seven and a half inch radius. So these pole pieces are higher, so because your strings should should be like that over. But if you are, and they they do that. Because of the, the strength of the magnets is all the same, so these need to be a bit closer. But if you charge a pickup like that with two staggered pole pieces, they're going to be much stronger. Because when you pull them through the magnets, they're so much closer they'll be like 50 to 100 gauss stronger I reckon I've had a look at it though already but we're going to measure them now so we're going to measure each pole piece on both sides and see how unevenly they are charged Right, this is our new setup. Um, we've got the Gauss meter in a lab stand, and I've put that exactly to zero degrees on both sides with a digital angle gauge. And at the bottom, we've got an acrylic plate, a thick acrylic plate. And that reason is uh, twofold. The first is so I can um, have a perfectly horizontal surface so that the pickup can sit on it. And I can put the pickup a bit to the side so it sits as exactly horizontal to. Uh, because I can't be bothered to unsolder I don't really want to the wires and it, the wires are a bit above the bottom plate so so I can put it like that and the wires are off here and I've measured it it's perfect so now we can um, each measurement I'll check that it's all straight and I can drop the uh, probe on top of the pole piece like that and I'm not moving anything so that's good so what I'm going to do now is I'll measure all the pole pieces we'll measure one together and uh, we'll measure one of these high ones together as well and then see how good or how bad they are Right, this is the program we're going to use again. It's from a company called CMA, which was originally the University of Amsterdam. They were a part of the University of Amsterdam. 
and now they've got their own uh, business which I've got nothing to do with but it's I like this program and uh, we're measuring in millitesla that's that probe and this is the quantity B which is magnetic flux density here you'll see when we start the measurement the reading uh, converted to Gauss which is just millitesla multiplied by 10 this is a graph that it draws when it's measuring and if I open this you can't see this but we're going to measure for 10 seconds we're going to make each pole piece for 10 seconds and we're going to make 4,000 measurements each second with a total of 40,000 measurements and then that will be plotted here and here you get it in uh, just numeric values and so let's do one measurement see what happens so I've got it on the high E and we're measuring the high E for 10 seconds and the graphs plotting and that's it this has stopped because it was a formula and, and the, pro, the program only ran for 10 seconds and this you can still see going up and down because it's still on like it's real time so that was the measurement and if I just open the graph if I zoom in on the graph you can see each individual measurement and I can open the graph a bit bigger see if I can zoom in I can't zoom in um, but here you can see that the measurement fluctuates between 368 and 384 Gauss and I've sent the bloke an email and he's going to uh, tell me why it's doing that it might be just uh, I don't know anyway we'll wait for that but that's a small uh, fluctuation compared to what we're measuring it's like five percent or something what we also can do now is analyze the graph and I won't analyze it I'll I'll plot a average so this is the average of the measurements and we can look at this we could even zoom in on this bit and I can see here the average is 376 and a half Gauss or 37,6 millitesla for the high E string so I'm going to make a note of that and then I'll go ahead and measure all the other pole pieces and I'll show you how much higher this, a staggered pole piece measures and then now uh, we'll see what it looks like so I'll crack on with that right funnily enough this was one one of the staggered pole pieces and it's actually measuring lower so uh, this is the G string it's my G string and uh, it's 275 right this is the uh, D string another one of the staggered pole pieces and it's way high so 
let the measurement finish. There we go. This is the measurement and I'll zoom in now on a bit. I've also put a formula in that it plots the uh, average as well. Perhaps you can see it better like this. I don't think you can. Anyway, this uh, is the other staggered pole piece, the D, and it's 405. 405. Right, these are the results. This is the pickup. We've got the low E here and the high E here. Here we've got the pole pieces with the south up and north down. These are the measurements of the south side. South, and these are the measurements of the north side. And as you can see, um, I was wrong. Well, wrong. Half wrong. I was exactly half wrong. The, the two staggered pole pieces, one was really high, 405. And the the other one, the G, was low. It was 275. And the difference uh, between the highest and the lowest was, what's that, 145 Gauss. And the difference between the lowest and the highest of the North Pole was only 56. That was between the B and the E string. So as you can see, it's a mess. It's a mess. They're all over the place. So it's getting a bit late now for me here in Holland. And um, so I'm going to quit now and I'll carry on another day but these are the measurements as we see now of um, charging our Nico magnets uh, through a vise um, then they're, they're not evenly charged in no manner and not on both sides there's a, a huge difference and in between the pole pieces there's a difference so